So if we said, I want to be wealthy or I want to be healthy, well, what, what you want to be that because you're not it. <laughs> so the initiation of going from not it here to it here, you're going to have to climb some steps. Hello and welcome to the Pacific Channel. I'm your host, Steve Doherty. In this set of audio clips from Dr. Joe Dispenza, he's going to talk about how if you want to improve all aspects of your life, you're going to have to change your personality. And it's not an easy task to do this because you have to become conscious of your unconscious thoughts and behavior. You have to be able to step outside of your normal paradigm of reality and see yourself for who you really are. Then he is going to say that you must modify your emotions that keep you connected to the past. You must decide whether or not any emotion belongs in your future, and if not, then you must leave it behind. This is where I think EFT is so good. If you clear the negative emotion from past events, you no longer have to worry about carrying any negative emotion into your future. Then Dr. Joe talks about how you can't create a new personal reality without changing your personality and how you must literally become someone else. Next, he talks about how, for most of us, when we try to change our personality to be more upbeat and positive, we then hear voices in our heads saying, it's too hard, I'm too old, I'm too tired, it's too late, etc. What is happening is that the body and the subconscious mind revolt against any conscious mind thinking and wants to hold on for dear life to the familiar and not the unknown, even if it means a better future or well-being for you. Your subconscious mind and body want more than anything else to hold on to cognitive congruence, which simply means that all of your beliefs, negative or not, fit nicely together and are never challenged. In other words, your subconscious mind and body have worked really, really hard to keep you safe in the world by creating beliefs about yourself. So you have a belief about how worthy you are. You have a belief about what your limits are. You have a belief about what you are worthy of receiving. You have a belief about how good of a public speaker you are. You have a belief about how smart you are. And all of those beliefs are created by experiences in your past that cause you to create those beliefs. But by using a tool like EFT, you can change those beliefs by getting at the root cause problem, which is the negative emotion you felt for past events that occurred. Let's listen to Dr. Joe explain this problem and then his solution for it. I'm your host, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Let's begin. So if you want to create a new personal reality, a new life, it means you're going to have to change your personality. That means you're going to have to start thinking about what you've been thinking about in that 95% and change it. You're going to have to become conscious of your unconscious habits and behaviors, how you speak and modify them. And then you're going to have to look at those emotions that keep you connected to the past and decide, does this emotion belong in my future? And if it doesn't, leave it behind and the memory associated with it. So most people try to create a new personal reality as the same personality, and it doesn't work. We literally have to become someone else. And the act of becoming is a function of overcoming. So that means you got to light a match in a dark place. And when you sit down and all of a sudden you hear those voices, I can't, it's too hard, I'll never change, it's my ex's fault, it's my boss's fault, you know, uh, I'm too this, I'm too that, I'm too old, I'm too tired, it's too late. And those are the thoughts that are the boundary of the known. And now you're stepping out into new territory and the body that's been conditioned to be the mind emotionally is saying, don't go, don't, don't leave the, uh, the known here. Stick with guilt. It's much better. Stick with suffering. At least you can predict it. And yet your conscious mind is wanting to go for a ride and your body's going, whoa. So, so then it may take a little time to help the body out of the past. It's, it's, it takes some time, right? Uh, so then the person can have a, a great meditation and feel really connected. 
and then get up and then get frustrated on the freeway and judging everybody else. I mean, you just disconnected from the energy of your future and you're back to the energy of your past. Don't expect anything to change. And if you tell me it's because of that person or that circumstance, I'm going to say, oh, you're back to the unconscious program of being a victim in your life. And so there is a period, a grace period of transformation where we have to cross this river from the old self to the new self. And that, that void, that unknown, is the neurological, the biological, the chemical, the hormonal, the genetic death of the old self. And, and the most people, the moment they step out, and the hardest part about change is making a new choice. The moment you make a new choice, get ready. You're leaving the known. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be unfamiliar. There's going to be some uncertainty. You can't predict. You're not in the known any longer. And most people, you know, they step out and they hear that voice. It's too hard. You never change. And they believe in that thought. And that thought leads to the same choice, which leads to the same behavior, creates the same experience, produces the same emotion. And then they say, oh, this Aubrey feels right to me. No, that feels familiar. So, so then if you're becoming conscious of how you speak, you're sitting in your meditation and you're becoming aware of how you act that you complain and you blame and you make excuses you feel sorry for yourself you judge other people now you're conscious of what you were unconscious of that's a victory too we're all faced with great opportunities brilliantly disguised as impossible situations uh, i mean for me there's there's no school of ancient wisdom that you need to go to to be initiated your life is your initiation if you're paying attention so we meet challenges in our life from a certain level of mind, right? A certain level of consciousness or unconsciousness. And even Einstein said we have to go to a greater level of consciousness uh, than the consciousness that's created the problem. Well, what is consciousness? Consciousness is awareness. And awareness means possibilities that you haven't thought of before. So we, c we confront problems or challenges in our life. And as a side note, I was having breakfast with a researcher just last week who's studying what happens when we perceive a condition in our environment as a problem, how it weakens the organism, they're measuring this, and when a person sees it as a challenge, how they draw energy, they, they raise the energy of their body back into order. So if we said, I want to be wealthy or I want to be healthy, well, what, what you want to be that because you're not it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the initiation of going from not it here to it here, you're going to have to climb some steps mm -hmm. and there's going to be some blind spots. So you try it out and it doesn't work. Well, that's because there's a part of you that's still in a habit. There's part of you that's still unconscious. Okay. So what is it about myself and that circumstance that I am feeling about that circumstance? And that feeling is causing me to think about it. So you say, oh, it's impossible. They'll never change. I'll hire a hitman. I'll hire the mafia. I'll hire an attorney. I'll have my friend's friend to talk to him. And nothing changes, right? Well, you're not, you're not separate mm. from that experience. You're involved in it. And how you think and how you feel broadcasts energy into the field. So your energy is the same every day. And as long as your energy is the same, nothing's going to change in your life either. And nobody changes until they change their energy. So then what piece of knowledge, what piece of information, what would love do? What would greatness look like? Okay, I don't know. All right, well, certainly somebody in history has faced this problem. Don't get on Facebook and say, does anybody have any answers? Don't get... <laughs> Go look it up and study and read and learn. You'll own it. And you'll say, wow, that person that was wealthy, they failed 500 times. Yeah. Well, hell, I had the wrong view of wealth. Mm -hmm. Okay, then failure's not a thing. I got to overcome failure. Well, yeah, just climb the step. Yeah. Okay, I'm reacting to that circumstance with the same emotion. That emotion is firing the same thoughts. I'm broadcasting the same energy into the field. If I were facing that circumstance and situation again with that person, that circumstance, what do I learn from that circumstance? How could I do it differently the next time? Mm. Find out a solution and rehearse it. Mm. Install the circuitry so when you get in the circumstance, you're not going to respond in an automatic habituation. Yeah. Now you're at a greater level of consciousness. Now you're looking at possibilities that you weren't looking at before because you were unconscious. Now, that process of trial and error is so important in the spiritual path. How many times 
do we have to forget before we remember? Oh, and then we remember and we forget again. And it takes constantly remembering until we stop forgetting. Mm -hmm. And when we get to that point, now we're conscious. Now there's wisdom. And wisdom is the memory of the experience without the emotional charge. Now you're ready. So your personality, literally, Ed, is made up of how you think, how you act, and how you feel. And how you think, how you act, and how you feel is your personality, and your personality is intimately connected to your personal reality, your life. So then if you want to change your life, your personal reality, you got to change your personality. And here we go again. you got to start becoming conscious of your unconscious thoughts. you got to start noticing how you act, how you speak. You gotta pay attention to how you're feeling. Some people would live in guilt their whole entire life and don't even know it's guilt because at least it feels like them. So then when you start doing that, you begin to objectify your subjective self. So, so then when you begin to make small changes back to thought, a new thought should lead to a new choice. A new choice should lead to a new behavior. A new behavior should create a new experience, and a new experience should create a new emotion. Yes. And that new emotion is teaching your body chemically to understand what your mind is intellectually understood. Now your body is embodying the truth, right? Mm. So then the new emotion should inspire new thoughts, and that's called evolution. So how do we get stuck? It's really simple. The stronger the, the emotion you feel from some event in your life, be it a betrayal or a trauma or whatever, yes. the more altered you feel inside of you, the more you pay attention to the cause outside of you. So the brain takes a snapshot. It freezes an image and embosses that pattern neurologically in the brain. That's called a memory. Mm. So we create long-term memories from strong emotional events. Teach a person then how to trade that emotion for an elevated emotion. Now, Trade the emotion for an elevated emotion. Right. So you're going to give that up and you're going to practice feeling gratitude for, as an example. Yes. And the person says, well, I can't feel gratitude. And I say, I, absolutely you can because you don't practice feeling it. You practice spending most of your time feeling hatred and frustration. Mm -hmm. So now it's going to take a little time to cause that heart of, you to bloom, or, or your, mm -hmm. heart of yours to bloom. Once they're able to feel even the smallest measure of gratitude, where they start feeling appreciation, thankfulness, Gratitude, it's emotional signature. When you, when you get something, mm -hmm. uh, when you're receiving something, when something has happened to you, uh, or when something is happening to you, you say thank you because you're receiving something. So the emotional signature of gratitude means the event has already happened or it's happening to you. Mm -hmm. So the moment you open your heart and you feel gratitude, well, that emotion then is telling the body that the experience has already occurred. And the thought then mm -hmm. can make it into the body because it's consistent with the Whoa. thought. So now you're beginning to program the autonomic nervous system into a very specific destiny. Mm -hmm. and you gotta maintain that modified state of mind and body your entire day, mm -hmm. independent of the conditions in your outer environment, mm -hmm. independent of your body's cravings of those emotions and habituations mm. and independent from time mm. and if you can get ready because something weird or unusual some synchronicity some coincidence some mm. opportunity is gonna land in your lap and you didn't have to go and get it yes it came to you now you're the vortex of creation so if you say to me well I was feeling gratitude but then there was traffic or my co-worker sent me a, a nasty email mm. then I would say oh my god you mean you're allowing your environment, right. your outer environment, to control how you feel and think? Mm -hmm. You're back to the unconscious program that you're the victim to your life. You got it. But when you start producing those outcomes in your life, you're going to pay attention to what you did inside of you, and you're going to believe more that you're the creator of your life and less of the victim of your life. I, I really think that when the survival gene is activated, preservation is the key. Mm -hmm. So we can have 10 things that happen really great in our lives. You have a family member or somebody you know that does this. They have 10 really great things happen in their one thing bad and they focus on that bad thing. Why? Because the survival gene is activated. They want to make sure it doesn't happen again. So, so you put your attention on it because you don't want it to happen again. So what people do when they're aroused is they start thinking it's going to happen. So they actually select the worst case scenario in their mind and then emotionally embrace that future before it happens. Mm. And they're conditioning their body to become the mind of anxiety and fear. So in preservation and in survival, if you prepare for the worst, anything less that happens, you have a better chance of surviving. So that's the mechanism that takes place. So 
survival means you better take care of your body. Yeah. You better be aware of your environment and make sure there's no threats. And so you got to keep your eye out there. And you better be thinking about the future. If the word meditation means become familiar with, right? Yes. Then, you know, people say, oh, well, you shouldn't focus on the negative. Well, really? That's 95% of who you are. And you got to begin to dismantle or denature that old personality. Mm -hmm. And that means you're going to have to come up against the cravings that the body has emotionally. You know, like if it's, it's eight o'clock in the morning and you're doing your meditation, you're normally in traffic and you want to get angry and your body's going, hey, you're off schedule. So <laughs> let me just find a, something that's mapped in the brain that I, I'll bring up a past experience why you can feel a little anger. <laughs> well, now once you become aware of that, now, now the game is on, yes, right? Yes. Because now you're working to become conscious of that and not go unconscious again. And it takes an incredible amount of awareness. Yes. It takes a great amount of consciousness and you can't have consciousness without energy. Mm. So you gotta raise your energy in order to get to it. Otherwise, you're gonna be consumed. We would love to give back to our Pacific family for all the love and support they have given us. We are offering two lucky winners a ticket to Dr. Joe Dispenza's week-long retreat in Sunshine Coast, Australia, worth $2,300 each. To enter the giveaway, you must be a subscriber to our channel Pacific. Like this video, comment how our channel has helped you. Share this video with any five people. And stay tuned on our channel as we will declare the winner soon. Please refer to the description below for more info. Good luck. So. According to Dr. Joe, if you want to overcome your body's desire to be the mind and to rule your life, you must overcome it. You must stay connected to the energy of the future instead of the energy of the past. And if you blame anyone or anything for your current situation, then you are being a victim in your life. So if you want to change your personal reality, you're going to have to go through a transformation period of time where you must become comfortable with the unknown. You must embrace the unknown. You must convince your system and your body that it is okay to change, that transformation is a good thing. It's simply about making a new choice, right? But that's not as easy as it sounds according to Dr. Joe. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be unfamiliar and uncertain. Dr. Joe also talked about how you must start thinking, behaving, and believing that what you want is already here. You may not be able to manifest everything that you want instantly, but you can start to change your thinking almost instantly. He also talked about how you cannot fail in this. Failure is the price you pay for success. He quoted Einstein, but there is another quote from Einstein that is pretty interesting. When Einstein was asked about how he felt about failing 1,000 times to create the light bulb, he said that he didn't fail 1,000 times. He found 1,000 ways it didn't work. In other words, you can either have a pessimistic or an optimistic attitude about the natural process of failing forward. Almost any successful endeavor includes failure at some point. So it's your attitude about failure that counts most. What does Dr. Joe suggest to stop automatic, habitual thoughts, behavior, and action? Think about what happened, find a solution, and rehearse it in your mind until it becomes new circuitry in your mind. He also said that the definition of wisdom is the memory of an experience without the emotional charge. Right there, he explains what EFT does so well. I'm sorry to keep bringing this up, but there is an easier way to go about letting go of negatively charged emotions about past memories, and that is EFT, of course. In addition, he said that the stronger that the emotion you feel from some event in your life, then the more you pay attention to the cause outside of you. Anytime that you experience some traumatic event or something that makes you feel bad, your brain takes a snapshot of it and stores it as a memory.
But in addition to what Dr. Joe says here, that memory is then used to support the negative beliefs that you have about yourself. So for example, if you believe that you're not smart enough, your subconscious mind can dig up every memory you ever had to support that belief, even though it may not be true because those memories were from childhood or the conclusion wasn't even accurate. Then Dr. Joe says to trade all negative emotion for an elevated emotion. But the problem with that is that it is not easy to do it at all if you haven't cleared out the negative emotional charge from those past events. And according to the law of attraction, it's impossible to jump from depression to joy, from fear to passion, from anger to happiness all at once. The gap is too far. The vibrational gap is just too far. This is why you must work your way up the emotional scale instead of trying to trade very low vibrational feelings for the highest ones right from the get go. The other interesting thing Dr. Joe talked about was how some people may have, may have 10 good things going on in their life, but then just one bad thing. And they choose to focus on just that one bad thing. He doesn't say this, but what happens is when you focus on that one bad thing in your life via the law of attraction, you then mess up all the other 10 good things that were going well. So stop thinking about the worst case scenario. Focus on the good. Focus on the best case scenario. Focus on what is going right in your life instead of what is going wrong. And then you will get more and more of what you want in life. If you like this video, please wallop the like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe as well. And now if you have any questions, please ask them below and I'll do my best to answer them. Or leave a comment about what you think about this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.